All right, so I'm doing some trailer maintenance. One of the things I've got going on here is my lights aren't working. So I've got a new light kit. Uh, comes with pretty much everything I need, including a new tag bracket. I always end up breaking those off anyway, as you can see on here. Um, one of the things you wanna do is look through, make sure you've got all your hardware. And here, I see wire nuts. I don't like using wire nuts in a wet environment. So anything I can replace with heat shrink connectors, I'm gonna use heat shrink connectors instead. You're gonna start by taking your lights off. Got two on mine, seven sixteenths nuts on there. I'm gonna pull those. Identify what lights go where. So this light is my passenger side light. This light is my driver side light. And the reason I know that is this clear lens here allows the light to shine down on your tag. So it'll mount behind the tag bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pulled off. I'll show you where we go from there. So one of the things you can see on a new light kit is my ground wire actually goes on the back of the nut. So one of the things you wanna make sure with that is you get you a wire brush, go to the back side where your nuts go through, your bolts go through and your nuts go through. Make sure you clean that off a little bit. Try not to take off the actual galvanized on the trailer because that's the start of corrosion, but you wanna make sure you get a good solid connection also. Too. You wire brush off enough that you don't have that corrosion in there, but you don't want to end up taking all your galvanized protection off. So from there, being that I've got an entire new wire that's going to run through, I'm going to take these with some side cutters, cut them off, I'll end up taping it to my new wires, pulling it all the way through. There's a track on the underside of the rail under there, and I'll pull it all the way through that. So coming up to the tongue of the trailer, I've got my old plug. All this is gonna get pulled through from the front to the back. And the reason I'm gonna pull it front to back is because I've got the new plug on the new wiring and it's not gonna fit through all this wiring track through the back of the trailer. So what I'll do is I'll take my side cutters again here, cut every bit of this off. And I can start by separating out <clears throat> my wires in this new wire and seeing which side goes down the driver's side of the trailer, which side goes down the passenger side of the trailer. Then I'll take them and electrical tape them together. That way everything will go through smoothly. One of the things I like to do is take my extra wire cut the other extra two wires off same thing for this side cut the extra wire off of that loop them through each other and then electrical tape it that way you have less mass pulling through all your wire and track all right so once you got those taped up ready to pull through smoothly make sure that the rest of your wire is not tangled up and you can easily straighten it out otherwise it's going to end up hanging inside these tracks so what I'll do is I'll start pulling it. You can see it coming up through here. And as I get here, there it is through that. You can look under here, you can see the next track it has to go through. So what I'll do is I'll pull it through section by section. To make sure nothing hangs. Pull this back a little bit to make sure everything's going through straight. See my tape come out right here and goes through that next side. So now I'll be able to keep working it all the way back to the very back of the trailer. Same with this other side. I'm gonna hold it right here, start pulling it through. It's got a bunch of excess in there. So you'll see my wire come out, coming out. There's my end. So now I'll start pulling it through this way here. Straighten everything out. 
there's my new wire through that. Same thing, it'll go down the track on this side, get it pulled all the way back to where it comes out where the new lights are, or, the, or where the new lights will be. Okay, so I'm to the point. My new wiring harness has got probably about eight feet sticking out of it. So what I wanna do, want to do is determine how far do I want my wiring harness to stick out. Uh, one of the things I can do here is walk to my other trailer. I know this one reaches all the way to my truck okay, so I can take a measurement on this see how far that sticks out make the distance the same distance on this so what I'll do is I'll pull everything back as far back as I need it to go to make sure it's the distance I need it to be so I can keep sliding this out you can see here where my electrical tape is instead of having to unwire all that untwist all of it easiest thing for me to do is take my wire strippers just cut that off and then I can take all my old wiring, separate it out from all my new stuff that it's mixed in with now, go ahead and just throw it in the trash because I'm done with it. So my wiring harness on my other trailer was about 22 inches from the end of the tongue. So what I'm going to do on this one is I've taken some electrical tape. I've marked that at 24 inches. I'm going to slide that out to the coupler. And I know I've got another 24 inches past that which I'm gonna end up covering that in a wiring loom. I've got plenty of uh, room to attach my ground to the trailer with whatever hardware they gave me for that. And now I can go back to the back of the trailer, find out how much additional wire I need for these lights. Leave myself a few inches just to make sure I've got plenty of room. Feed it through the hole here where it's supposed to go to mount to my light itself. And then go ahead and cut the excess off with my wire strippers or my side cutters. So you can see I've already got this, this light mounted. I put the trailer tag between the light and the metal frame. That way when I get to the back and I have my ground, my ground has a good solid connection on the middle of the trailer. So looking at this light here, I'll give you an idea. I set it on the plastic or on the paper. That way I'm not scratching the lens up while I'm working on everything. You got three slots here that your bolts can go in. This one, the one on the very end, or you can go right here in the middle. Mine actually fit in these two slots here. So just depending on what the layout of your trailer is, how far the spacing of your, your bolt holes are, is going to be where it goes. Now the wires have a little track that you can press them down into. And pretty much what I did is laid it down, pushed each wire in on my thumbnail, made sure that that fit around that little corner, pressed them into this track with my thumbnail, and then there's a little slot here everything can come out of. That way your lights will fit flush. Just remember your ground wire won't necessarily come out here. On my other one, I ran my ground wire right out of the bottom, and that way it could come around, go under, and connect right right to the back of the, the metal so I've got a good ground up there. What your ground wire is going to do, because this, this does not have a ground wire that runs from one end to the other. Your ground wire coming from your plug comes up, it's cut off at the end, and it will probably either fasten to the bolt here or screw to the trailer here. Uh, just something so you got a good solid ground. you got enough metal in your trailer that it's going to ground out through the whole thing. A lot of times they'll even work without putting the ground here because you're going to get a ground all the way through your trailer at the ball of the trailer. So I've got all my lights put on. I've got my wire pulled. I trimmed everything off so when these come out, they're about the same length. One of the things that I've found with this kit in particular that I really dislike is they give you wire nuts to connect these together. And I think wire nuts are an absolutely horrible way to connect any sort of wire as when they're supposed to go in water. I think they're great for household wiring. I think they're good for doing interior work, uh, you know, garages, workshop, things like that. I don't think they belong on boats. I don't think they belong on boat trailers. As soon as this goes in the water, water will get straight into there. It'll get right on these wires. And if you can get any sort of continuity between each other or the ground, you're going to get electrolysis, which is going to eat your wires up. You're going to get salt in the copper, which is going to eat your wire up anyway, especially me who's running this in a saltwater area. So I have heat shrink connectors 
which these blue are too large. So I've got the pinks. So I'm gonna use the pink or red is what they really are. Red heat shrink connectors. And I've got these Titan heat shrink crimpers. And what these do is in comparison with the two side by side, these give a nice even ratcheting crimp. Whereas these here have tendency to tear the casing on the heat shrink connectors. So if you're trying to be completely watertight, you want to make sure that it's not tearing the heat shrink connector. Pretty much once you crimp those on, you'll go ahead and get a uh, small torch or, or a lighter, or I use a heat gun because I can control and have more even heat with it as I move it all around. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these crimped up, get heat shrink connectors on them, and then head on to the next step. So I'm about ready to test the kit out. What I had to come and do last was put the ground wire and attach it to the trailer. So what I did is I took a self-tapping sheet metal screw because they didn't give me anything to put this in with. Ran it in with my drill just to get everything started. And then what I'll do here, I'm sorry, I'm one-handed trying to put everything together so you're missing what I'm doing. I'm getting it started on my screwdriver. I'll run it in with a screwdriver instead of the drill. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I hit the end, a lot of times you'll have tendency to over torque it with the drill, end up stripping it out. I don't want to strip it out, angle that forward so it gives it a nice clean look going that way. Make sure it's good and snug so I've got a good connection. Head on up to my truck. which is just absolutely filthy from hunting and working. Put my emergency flashers on, walk back here and see what we've got. That light is working. That light is working. So they're both flashing. We'll go up here, I'm gonna turn my turn signals on, make sure my turn signals are working properly. So I got back here, I got my left turn signal on, got my left turn signal flashing. So everything's working on that. Make sure my right turn signal is on and running. Yep, so everything's working. Emergency flashers, left turn signal, right turn signal. It's all looking good. Uh, this is a West Bar kit. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it other than the, the connectors that they gave me. Like I said, I think these are horrible, especially for someone who's gonna stick it in salt water like I am. I also did not put the side marker lights on. This is a small trailer. I'm not required to have side marker lights on it. And the problem I have with side marker lights is one more connector that, that's gonna go into water, potentially salt water, especially in my situation, and possibly fail. So if I can eliminate any failures, I really would rather not have any failures. But uh, overall, this installation took me 30 to 45 minutes, probably a little bit longer because I'm trying to record video for it. I know it's uh, not great video. Um, the only thing I have left to do is come back Hit all my connectors with a heat shrink, put a couple zip ties on them, make sure that they're good and out of the way, and I'll be good to go. So if you've got any questions, comments, uh, advice, maybe I could, do, could have done something a little bit differently, something that speeds up for me, or something you think I would do better, I'd be happy to hear your opinion. I wanted to note too, on the back side on this ground wire, what I did is I went and twisted it up, that way it wasn't hanging down. Uh, kind of cool up against itself that way everything stays nice and tight up against here but like i said questions comments leave them below i'd like to hear your opinion and see what you think about my installation